So let's first look at acid chloride. We'll look at all the different reactions that we can do with acid chlorides to make the other acid derivatives. So first, we'll start with a carboxylate. So if we had like a sodium on here, this would be sodium acetate. So sodium acetate reacting with acetyl chloride. Right? I'd also challenge you to draw this mechanism first before you watch me do it, because I think you should be able to figure out this mechanism, how it works by now. So go ahead and do that, and then come back and double check to see that you did it right. So as always, we ask who has electrons and who wants them. So of course the carboxylate has electrons, it's got the full negative charge there. The carbonyl carbon is going to be who wants them. So electrons flow from who has them to who wants them. That forces the pi bond and the carbonyl to break. The electron pair will go out onto oxygen to form an intermediate. Our intermediate's got a negative charge on oxygen now. And we have, here's our new piece that we just added. We just added the carboxylate and then it still has a chloride on it. So the standard question arises again, do we have a good leaving group? And the answer of course is yes. So this electron pair comes back down to form, reform the carbonyl and the chloride leaves. Now you notice I'm drawing in the byproducts right now because I wanna consider whether or not the reaction should happen. And so to do that, once again, we need to look at the reactivity of our carboxylate versus our chloride. And so the pKa of the conjugate acid of this is minus 7. The pKa of the conjugate acid of this is about 4, 4 to 5, closer to 5 maybe, but good enough. So does this reaction occur or not? And you'd say the chloride is 10 to the 11 times more stable on its own than the carboxylate. So if it's 10 to the 11 times more stable, that's a great driving force to make this reaction happen. So this reaction, in fact, does occur. You can do the same reaction with hydroxide or even with just water. Either one will work. Uh, the hydroxide mechanism is just a little bit easier to draw, but it's really the same thing. So once again, ask yourself the same question you always ask, who has electrons, who wants them? Form the intermediate. Determine if you have a good leaving group or not. If you do, the electron pair comes back down, reforms the carbonyl, leaving group leaves, and you have a carboxylic acid. You can do the same analysis if you want to that we did before. That's Cl minus. So now we're looking at Cl minus versus OH minus. pKa is of minus 7 and about 15. So of course that reaction will occur as well. You can do the same thing with an alkoxide. So in this case, I have sodium ethoxide, who has electrons and who wants them. The O minus has electrons, carbonyl carbon wants them. Electron pair goes out onto the oxygen to make the intermediate O minus O ethyl chloride. Ask if you have a good leaving group or not. You do, the electron pair comes down, chloride leaves. And now you have an ester plus chloride ion. You can do the same analysis again. Look at the stability of chloride ion versus the stability of the alkoxide. The pKa of the conjugate acid of the chloride is minus seven. The pKa of alcohol, the conjugate acid of this alkoxide, 15 to 18, so this is 10 to the 22 to 10 to the 25 times more stable. Once again, very good driving force to make this reaction occur. And you can do the same kind of reaction as well with an amide, something like sodium amide. It's a very strong base, very good nucleophile. That can come in here and attack the carbonyl, pushes electrons out onto oxygen to make our intermediate. We ask if we have a good leaving group. Once again, we do have a good leaving group and we can form an amide. And that works with NHR or NR2 also. Now we can also do these reactions with neutral compounds. So I can react with water and the water will add, but we're gonna have a problem if, when we add the water. And there's another compound that we're gonna use and I'll tell you about it in just a minute. But let's look at what's gonna happen first. So now if my water adds to my carbonyl, and that can happen. 
I still have a very good leaving group in the chloride, so this can come come back and reform the carbonyl. This electron pair can break, go with chlorine. Except at this point, I don't have a neutral molecule yet. So I can draw one of these protons leaving somehow. It would be great if I had something to take it off, and I'll talk about why in just a second here. But if I draw one of these protons leaving, what I end up getting is my carboxylic acid and HCl. Well, the chloride really doesn't want that proton. That's part of what makes it such a great leaving group because it doesn't want the proton. So instead, what we need is we need something else to come in and pull that proton off. So what typically is used is pyridine. And pyridine is a, a pretty decent base and that can come in there. And then when the pyridine grabs the proton, this electron pair goes back onto oxygen. And now we have our carboxylic acid. We also will have pyridinium chloride as byproducts. And you can do that same reaction. I'm not going to draw the mechanism out because it's really almost identical. You can do the same thing if I want to react with a neutral alcohol, like ethanol. I can react with ethanol and pyridine and get an ester that I made ethyl acetate, the ethyl ester. And then again, I would have pyridinium chloride left over.